Chewie's got a train to catch. This is your look at the Gentle Giant Limited Star Wars Solo Chewbacca 1-6 scale statue. During his long life, Chewbacca has been many things. Wookiee warrior, ace smuggler, and rebel hero, Chewie fought with the Republic on Kashyyyk during the Clone Wars, then befriended Han Solo while in Imperial captivity on Min Bon. After adventures on Vandor and Kessel, he became Han's co-pilot aboard the Millennium Falcon, and eventually helped the Alliance restore freedom to the galaxy. Known for his short temper and accuracy with the bow caster, Chewie also had a big heart, an unflagging loyalty to his friends. He stuck with Han Solo through the years of turmoil and flew the Falcon alongside Rey after the Corellian's death. Designed, modeled, and prototyped using top-of-the-line 3D technology, this 1-6 scale statue is hand-cast, hand-painted, and hand-numbered with a limited certificate of authenticity. May the Force be with you. Chewbacca from Solo, a Star Wars story, is limited to only 1,000 pieces worldwide. Before we go ahead and chat about Chewie, the first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall the Chewbacca statue stands. And while I am calculating this out, I'd like to send out a big old thanks to the folks over at Diamond Select that provided the sample of Chewbacca that we're having a look at in this review. If you're in the market of picking this one up for yourself, not quite sure if you want to take that leap just yet, maybe you want to know how tall the statue stands first, more than happy to oblige by telling you that Chewbacca stands 14 inches exactly. And switching that to centimeters, then you're looking at the statue standing 35.6, a little over 35 and a half centimeters tall. You may not be able to see it, but come included with Chewbacca, you get yourself a certificate of authenticity. The front is your traditional standard trading card design with a depiction of what the statue looks like along the top, complete with a stand down below. Below that, you have Star Wars Chewbacca 1-6 scale statue presented to us from the folks over at Gentle Giant Limited. And then when we go ahead and flip this around, on the back is the official certificate of authenticity. Make sure you hold on to this. This will tell you the limited number release of only 1,000 copies. So there's very little of Chewie to go around. This one happens to be 179 out of that, that stated already 1,000 copies. Down below that, you've got Gentle Giant Limited. Down below that, you've got their website at www.gentlegiantlimited.com forward star dash wars. Very carefully, I removed Chewbacca from his display stand, and let's have a look at the display stand first. Let me just pick this up, because it does have some substantial weight to it. Unfortunately, I did have one little bit of damage that happened on my display base, and I was trying to figure out what exactly was the cause of it. Chewbacca will sit along the top in these post openings here. They go different directions, so it's a good easy way to figure out which way they go, simply by just the direction that Chewbacca's feet actually do go. Unfortunately, though, like I said, there was this little crack that happened. And I think what ended up being the case was this, this piece of plastic, essentially there's a mirrored surface to this. Here is the main base, and then you've got the mirrored reflection surface along the top. I think what had happened was there was a, just a little bit of plastic that overlapped the hole. I'm not sure if you can actually see that or not. This side is pretty flush. This side, though, stuck up just enough that when I put Chewbacca down for the very first time, I thought I heard something. Removing Chewbacca again from the base, I realized that it clipped that little bit of ledge, just that little plastic that overlapped that opening, and caused a fractured line, causing right across the front. Now, this isn't going to be too bothersome for me. I'm, my biggest concern more so is actually for the fact there's so many fingerprints that this stand picks up regularly. Uh, this, though, is, isn't so much of an issue because Chewbacca, as you'll see in a second, his foot, as well as his fur, sort of overlaps this area. And I'm never really ever going to see it unless I take Chewbacca back off the stand. Disappointing I am, yes, that that had to be the case, but at least, as you'll see in a second, it will get hidden. 
Flipping the stand upside down, you're treated to once again gentle giant Star Wars Chewbacca 1-6 scale statue. And yes, the underside of the base is just as much the magnet for fingerprints as the top of the surface. You are treated also as well to four rubberized feet. Those are in all the corresponding corners of this rectangular display stand to, of course, prevent any scratching on any surfaces. Being the fact that the base is considerably heavy, I just felt it would be a lot easier to hold Chewbacca in my hands. And just that way, I'd be able to show you guys the details a little bit closer than to have to deal with, of course, having his feet plugged into the bottom into those hold openings of the base. But going back to what I had mentioned before, basically, these are the feet. These are the posts. These would be the things that go into those open holes. And this must have just been the case where it clipped that little ledge of plastic. So literally, like the plastic just hanged over just enough that when the post first went through, it put pressure on it and, of course, caused that buckling. But as you'll see from his feet, the buckling actually happens right here on the base. His foot is more than enough to cover over that, not to mention as well that Chewbacca has all this overhanging of fur. Between the two, like I said, once you put that down on that opening, I am disappointed, yes, that yes, that had to be the case, and I broke that little area. But the fetus, the foot, and this area of fur is so much overhanging that it's going to cover that instantly. I'm never really ever going to see it. That being said, let's move up. Let's move way up to the very top and look at Chewbacca's head sculpt. Now, this is Chewbacca depicted from Solo, a Star Wars story. Not liked by many. I admit, though, the more times I've seen it, I think I seem to like it a little bit more than the last. It's still not a great Star Wars film. I feel it's not a case where you need to know a lot about Han Solo's backstory, and Chewbacca sort of is just there. Now, this is Han Solo, a solo story version of Chewbacca. He's got his goggles down, but really, this could be Chewbacca from anything. Yes, his bandolier is slightly different that goes across the front of his torso. And yes, technically, that's not the same weapon he generally uses throughout the rest of the original trilogy, but it's certainly enough that I could easily say that's Chewbacca from any one of the Star Wars films. Heck, really, if there was a little bit of dusting of white, a little bit of snow perhaps added to Chewbacca, I feel easily he could be passable for Hoth Chewie, or Empire Strikes Back Chewbacca at the beginning of the film. The detailing on his face is really quite nice. Going back to the goggles I talked about before, you can see there's a little bit of a sort of frostedness that they've added to the plastic. It slightly distorts the eyes, but not nearly to the point where you can't even make out his eyes behind those goggles. They're very nicely painted, done in a gunmetal gray with like little etchings and scratchings in silver. That looks really nice. Chewbacca has a little bit of a paint defect. I thought initially it could have been blood on his teeth, but I don't think Chewie has done any bit of eating lately. I mean, he could have technically, but uh, I think it's more so just a little bit of paint. I got a little bit of paint problems on his teeth. My guess is when they were painting the lips, a little bit of that carried their way onto his teeth. And as a result of it, Chewie's got a little bit of almost lipstick on his teeth. It's something, again, from a distance, I'm not going to see it too much. Certainly not going to see it as much as I perhaps see Chewie's mustache. Ever since seeing Chewbacca for the first time in A New Hope, ever since then, I always seem to be drawn to around this area of his mouth. Because I always feel like I keep continuing to spot a mustache that's right above his lip. It doesn't help help it doesn't help at all that this six scale statue sort of has a different coloring that they used above the lip, more of a yellowish color than the more honey golden yellow that they used for the rest of his fur. And as a result of it, I'm even more drawn to the fact that it looks like Chewbacca's got himself a little chewy mustache. But overall, I do like the head sculpt quite a bit. You'll see a lot of straggling hairs. That's a continued trend for the rest of his body. These are things that you will want to be careful of. I'm, of course, being extremely careful right now, holding Chewbacca in my hand because of all these individual hairs and groupings of fur that stick out from the rest. If you're not too careful and you put a lot of pressure against those, any one of these could break at any given time. So again, be very, very careful. Normally, you probably wouldn't be picking up a statue like this. Once you put Chewie on his display stand, you're probably just going to leave him be and call it a day.
But yes, going back to his fur, though, his fur is so incredibly detailed. The fact that an artist would have sat down and decided which direction each one of these groupings of fur would go, none of them seem to be going in the same direction either. They really got some nice, interesting color here. The kind of base color, I don't know if you can see it or not, is sort of a very dark, almost pinkish brown. You can see it, it's, it, it's on the interior of his fur. And then just on the outside areas, they've painted, again, that sort of golden yellow. It really works quite well, specifically on this color of fur, which of course makes up a good chunk of Chewie's body. Not as much as perhaps the gray, and the gray gets just as much the treatment that the gold does. Again, very carefully spinning this around, you'll sort of see what I mean here. Again, there's very little areas to grab onto. I'm sort of holding it from the back of Chewie's legs. That seems to be the place that doesn't have as many of the hairs and furs sticking out. But as for the gray fur, the gray fur gets as much that detailing as well. It's a nice light gray that they've added in there as well. That looks really, really good. Of course, he's got the crisscross applesauce bandolier happening here on the back of his torso with a few shells there and some shells missing. Very nicely, the way that they painted that, painted the shells as well in a dark sort of brownish gunmetal gray. As you can see, if we just flip this around, well, actually, before we flip that around, show you the detailing on the side. He carries like a little side sash bag. It kind of has almost a full leather look to it, the way that they've sculpted it, the way that they've also painted it as well. It does have some really nice browns that they've incorporated in there as well. The little fastened sections, which of course, when you close off the bag, you'll fasten this shut, has some afforded silver in there as well. Continuing to spin it around, there's a few little pockets located on the side of his belt. There's a little silver, of course, where everything is harnessed together. And as we make our way up again, we're treated to the front of Chewie's bandolier, which has some more additional shells that the back didn't have. A lot of detail have been added to these individual shells. And of course, we can look at his firearm of choice. It's not, again, the one that he normally uses in the films, but I do like the detailing that they did to this. Nice dark gray. And hopefully, as the cameras, I'm hoping, will be picking up, some nice afforded silver has been etched in there as well. Probably my guess is they probably just take a paintbrush and brushed along those edges so that all the details molded to the rifle all stand out. And while it's not certainly just all grays and silvers, even on the end of the barrel, there's some additional pink and yellow that they've added in there. I really like the way that that turned out. But definitely going back to the point I had made before, you really want to be careful when you are picking Chewy up for yourself. My guess is you're probably not going to be as ham-handing this one as I am doing currently in this review. It's just simply so I can show you guys all the details on this particular piece, which such an exquisite looking rendition of Chewbacca. But yes, be very, very careful. You'll want to avoid areas at all costs that have the standing out hairs. Because again, you put pressure against that. This is all resin after all. You start buckling, putting weight against these you'll most definitely break them. Some are a little bit smaller than others, some are a little bit bigger than others, and these could almost be the more problemsome, worried areas to be concerned about. But he's basically got that everywhere. So I would most definitely say, when you do get this one out for yourself, put the base down immediately, maybe just do a quick check onto where that, that little mirrored glass is on the base and make sure that you don't have the overhang that I had. And then again, you just want to put Chewy down and then leave it be. So we're going to go ahead and spring the stand around very, very, very carefully. We're going to put Chewbacca down just like so, line everything up. And while I didn't hear it this time, there we go. While I didn't hear it this time when I put it down on the base, most definitely the first time, the very first time I did this, I did feel and notice a sound when I did put Chewie down. And again, it's just a shame that that plastic, that mirrored edge that we looked at before, overhung just enough that when again, the weight of Chewbacca's foot went down onto it, it put a lot of pressure in one area and it buckled that little area around the opening. As hopefully you can see here, wrapping up the rest of this review, when I put Chewie, Chewbacca down here on the base, that whole area is completely covered. I'm not even seeing that warped, broken piece on the display base. So at least to his credit, the fur is one thing you will want to be careful of on Chewbacca, being careful not to put too much pressure and grab onto areas on him because those would most definitely be the things that would break. But it works to his favor when it puts when it comes to putting him on the display stand. Not only does it cover the holes when the feet are going to be sliding into, but it does also give him a whole lot of additional depth when you're looking at the statue on display. Imagine as well if you have certain light 
light sources hitting this. Some of the hairs will be getting a little bit of the light. Some areas will be more shadowed. It really does turn out to be a quite a nice looking Chewbacca that you can put on display. Even if you don't want to necessarily attach it to Star Wars Solo, you can most definitely attach it to any one of the Star Wars films that Chewie has appeared in, because it really looks like it could be Chewie from any one of the films, not specifically just one of them. For me as a statue collector, I have varying degrees of what I consider to be damage on a statue. A lot of times I may ask myself the question, well, if it's something that you can fix by yourself with a little bit of glue, and it would be something you would never know you've glued it, I usually just go that route instead of trying to replace the statue. A lot of times in the past, it's been things like hands, it's been fingers, or it's been like parts of a weapon that have broken off. And I realize it on the inside of the box when I open it up, I've glued it in place, and I never knew anything about it after the fact because I completely forgot that I even glued it in the first place. Now, Chewie, here in a case of Chewbacca, nothing cosmetically on him is broken. In fact, what was broken on him was the hole that a foot peg went into. And again, I know exactly what caused it. There was a little bit of lip of plastic that hung over top of that opening. And I didn't realize it, put Chewie down into the base, and the weight of the Chewie a statue on his own was more than enough to buckle the weight around that opening. And that's a simple fix, because one good thing that works to this statue is that he has an extremely large Wookiee foot. Enough to completely hide that damage to the display base, and he also has the fur that does the same thing. It hides over that damage that happened to the base. I mean, I'm looking at it right now. If you didn't tell me it was broken, I would have never even known it in the first place. The positive, at least, is I like the mirrored surface that they had for the base. You've got a nice big area for the, the Chewbacca to stand on top of. And he does look great on a display. Going back to the thing that I mentioned about things that could potentially break on statues, you will want to tread lightly when it comes to Chewie's fur. Not only I don't think Wookiees like to have their, their fur played around with, but certainly as it goes for this statue, all the additional depth and texturing that the strands of fur have to this statue are also the things that could potentially break. So when you are taking this one out of the statue's box, just be careful. Don't grab onto any areas, of course, that have points of fur sticking out because you put too much pressure around that, it's probably going to break it right off. Now, again, you probably could go in and fix it, but these are all things that I'm just saying from personal experience of now having a look at this exquisite looking Chewbacca. Be very careful when you do take him out of the box and do be very careful when you're putting him into the display stand that you don't notice that there's a little lip of plastic hanging over. The same thing may happen to yours that happened to mine. So you may want to maybe just take a nail file and see if you can file down that little lip of plastic before you put Chewbacca actually into the opening. Just a little 411 friendly help from this humbled reviewer. As for Chewbacca, as he goes for a display piece, all the things that I mentioned about things you want to be careful of add to the overall effect of having a really neat Chewbacca on display. I love the textured fur and the fact that it does look like it goes in different directions. It really has a lot of depth to its paint as well. And he, because he does have the bandolier, the goggles, and his side sash bag, there's enough to it that you're not just looking at a furry Wookiee. Now, this one, again, is pulled from Star Wars Solo, the Solo Star Wars story. And don't let that be the thing that sort of, uh, I don't know if I want to pick up a Chewbacca because he's from Solo. I mean, again, looking at this, I could think that this is Chewbacca from any one of the appearances he's made in the Star Wars franchise. And again, even going back to a point I mentioned before, Gentle Giant, I think, has something of a hit on their hands. If they added just a little bit of dusting of white on this, he could instantly be, okay, maybe a little bit of tooling here and there, but he could probably be a really nice looking Hoth Wookiee from Empire Strikes Back. Either way, let me know down below in the comments section what you guys think of the Solo's Star Wars story, Chewbacca 1-6 scale statue. I'd also like to send out a big thank you to the folks over at Diamond Select who provided the sample of Chewbacca that we had a look at in this review. If you like the content you've been watching all this time and maybe you never got around to doing it, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below. Turn the bell notification on as a friendly reminder just to know that new videos will be coming soon to this channel. And as all, an additional friendly reminder, just know Monday to Friday, 12 p.m. and 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time is when you'll find new videos popping up on this channel. Speaking go going also back to Diamond Select, there's going to be a whole bunch of Diamond Select statue and figure reviews lined up and coming soon to this channel. So, of course, as always, yes, keep those disgustingly peepers peeled. I know why 
why we always go with saying peepers peeled, but it works. Keep those peepers peeled. There's definitely going to be a lot of videos coming your way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.